welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton. And today we're going to look at a disease or a condition that maybe not many of us have heard of, although it's not that rare. It's called dysautonomia. My guest is Elizabeth Peterson. Welcome, Elizabeth. Hi. You, um, you reached out to several mayors or city councils to try to raise awareness of this. Tell me, tell me that background. Yes, well, um, dysautonomia is not very rare. It impacts about uh, one to three million Americans, but many people have not heard of it. So I wanted to make people aware that, yes, this is very hard to live with. It is debilitating sometimes, and yes, it is real. It is real. And you were, you have been diagnosed officially not that long ago, but you've been struggling with some symptoms for a while since you were in middle school? Yes. Um, I started, like I would try to run and I would just be done. I would just, my heart rate would rise. I would feel dizzy. I would have trouble breathing actually. And, um, yeah. and, and then what happened? You went to the doctor? Um, I went to the, I started seeing a cardiologist and he didn't really give me an official diagnosis. He couldn't quite figure out what was wrong with me. And then about a year and a half later, I started having joint pain and extreme fatigue. And so I started seeing a rheumatologist who basically said I needed to run 10 miles a day to get better. Oh my gosh, which you can't do because <laughs> of the effects of your heart. Yeah. Were you athletic before? I mean, was this like a sudden change? Like, uh, I wouldn't notice if I couldn't run because uh, I don't run. Um, I wasn't particularly athletic, but I wasn't very lazy either. Like, I've done gymnastics. I did dance. Um, like, when I started having problems, I wasn't extremely active, but I wasn't like lying on the couch 24 hours a day. Okay, so it, it was enough of a change that it was really obvious to you. It was, yes. it was noticeable. Yes. And so you're in middle school. How does this affect your schooling? Let's talk about your education, your grades, your ability to attend school. Um, I would mostly just force myself to go even though I really didn't want to. Um, I did start, there was, like gaps, I would have trouble with remembering things. Um, like I would forget things. Um, so, what? Let's talk about if you can explain to me what this is. Dysautonomia. What does that mean? Is happening in your body? Okay, the autonomic nervous system controls your automatic body functions, like your heart rate, your blood pressure, your digestion, kidney function, all the things that most people don't think about. Well, for a patient with dysautonomia, that's, that nervous system does not function correctly. So any range of symptoms can happen. Like for me, I was having some of the common problems of like dizziness, um, exercise intolerance. Um, but it wouldn't show up necessarily on the traditional tests that a cardiologist might do on your heart. Yes, like um, it, he would do an EKG and that would be perfectly normal. Um, so how did you get diagnosed? How long did it take and, and how did that come about? Um, it took me about three years of seeing doctors to get diagnosed with dysautonomia. And um, he basically, he just looked at all my test results and all of my symptoms and said, okay, this, something's clearly wrong. It's, it's dysautonomia. So doctors had to talk to each other. So you can't have the cardiologist over here and the rheumatologist and the, and the general practitioner. They have to understand the full range, right? Yes. So what has happened since the diagnosis? Is there, is there a magic pill you can take that will make everything work again? Um, for e each patient um, needs different medications. For me, I was put on a medication to increase, to allow my kidneys to retain salt because dehydration causes a lot of the symptoms. And I was put on a medication to increase the serotonin production in my brain, which has helped quite a bit. And um, I was also put on a beta blocker a few months ago to help. And So when you reached out to the city councils and your email didn't say, I don't think, I could go back and look, but you know, I'm a 17 year old kid. It was just, I'm raising awareness of this disease and October, you know, is the month that, that is um, nationally kind of a, a spotlight for this disease. 
okay, most 17-year-old kids don't email mayors and city councils. I mean, really, that, that took a lot. What, what prompted that? Um, I was just getting very tired of people not hearing about my disease, even though it is fairly common, of, of people trying to say that my symptoms aren't real and that people were saying, oh, because it's not something that they hear about all the time, like diabetes or cancer. I was just really tired of people trying to say that just because they can't see my symptoms, I mean, they were trying to say that my symptoms don't exist. That's particular. I mean, that's got to be especially hard in high school where people are supposed to conform and you're supposed to fit the mold and yeah. there's a lot of pressure, peer pressure in that age group. Mm -hmm. Now, when I asked you before how your schooling was going and you said you forced yourself to go, you didn't mention your grades, Elizabeth. How are your grades? Um, I'm actually in National Honor Society and um, my grades are actually pretty good. Um, but I am actually, it's actually fairly rare for someone with dysautonomia to even finish high school because about a third of patients are so disabled that they can't attend work or school. And so one of the common symptoms is brain fog. So basically like, it's basically what it sounds like and it's very hard to keep up with school. Mm -hmm. Do you have that sometimes? Uh, sometimes, yes. Wow, this is a lot to bear when you're, you know, a student, not a, it's hard enough as, as a grown up when you have, you know, a complicated medical condition. Is your family um, been really supportive? Yes. Um, my mom actually really started pushing the awareness and um, it was her idea originally to start asking for proclamations and um, my parents have been very helpful. Um, my brother has been very understanding. Um, and this really is mostly diagnosed in, in kids. Well, and I shouldn't call you a kid, but you know, under people under the age of 21. And there's some chance that you'll outgrow it, that it yes. will fix mm -hmm. itself, that your brain um, that regulates these things will grow and develop into one that functions more appropriately. Yes, there's about a 20% chance that I will outgrow it. And otherwise, you will continue, for now at least, to treat the symptoms because there's no way to fix that, um, okay, autonomic, am I saying that right? That, yes. Okay. That's a lot to bear, right? Yeah. Um, what are your plans? You're a senior this year? Mm hmm And what are your plans uh, for the future? Um, I'm going to attend college and try to have a career as much as I can. And what are you interested in? Anthropology. So when you're not having to worry about your medical condition, Elizabeth, what do you do? What is fun for you? What are your hobbies and interests? Um, I read a lot. Um, I miss, like, um, I've been trying to learn other languages. I've, I've been trying to do things that don't exert myself too much because that triggers a lot of symptoms. Mm -hmm. So you, um, but learning other languages, that's not exactly an easy pastime. <laughs> it's, it's straining something, but it might not be a physical strain. That's, yeah. that's hard stuff. What are you learning? Uh, French, and I just started learning Italian as well. That sounds great. So what would you like to do? Tell me your dream career. Um, I would like to major in cultural anthropology, and um, I would like to study other cultures, maybe live abroad. Cool. Well, best of luck to you. That sounds exciting. And again, you know, what it, it takes a lot of gumption for somebody to come forward and say, I have this condition. It's real. It's not just that I'm different, but it sets you apart from everybody else. Like, what gave you the self confidence and the drive to be out front? Well, at some point, I just realized that I have this illness. I can either hide it and try to pretend that I'm something I'm not, or I can just say, this is what I have. It's real. It is not just, I'm not just faking it to get attention. This is very real. I live with it every day. There are so many kids that struggle with, I mean, I know people, a, lot of, a lot of kids with juvenile diabetes, with rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, there are a lot of things that affect kids that we don't always think about. 
And I think sometimes it's harder to get through high school <laughs> than it is the rest of your life because things will get better later. I think yeah. it's, uh, it's easier and people feel more confident saying, this is who I am. These are my limitations. These are my strengths. This is, uh, this is what I'm dealing with. Yeah. You've unfortunately had to get to that point at an earlier age. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for coming by. And thank you for helping to educate so many of us who are not familiar with this disease. Is there anything you want to add? Um, I do not think so. It's just um, in general with chronic illnesses that are considered invisible, like they are real. Don't try to minimize their pain. Um, there are organizations that help, like um, Dysautonomia International is one that has um, been doing a lot of patient advocacy and funding research. And the other thing I think you were telling me earlier is if you're having symptoms, don't ignore them and don't let a doctor say, I'm sorry, there's nothing in that test, you know, keep yeah. you and your mom and your, and your dad kind of put all these things together and pushed doctors to keep looking. Yes. Don't, don't give up. If yes. you have a problem and you know it's a real problem. Yes, because you know your body better than anyone else. You know when something's wrong. Okay. Well, thank you, and good luck in your future. Thanks for coming by to educate us. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. And thank you for watching. I hope you've learned as much as I have and understand this disease a little better. Thank you.